Hi friends, Will Davis Jr. here with Good News Today. Thank you for joining. It's great as always to see you. Thank you always and again for your comments. I get a lot of feedback from you guys and it means a lot and I appreciate it. I read every one of the things you send um, today. I can say again, send cards, comments, and complaints, etc. to Senior Pastor, SR Pastor at acfellowship.org. Um, I appreciate hearing from you. Genesis 3, 15. The Lord is now handing out judgment. When he there, There's no crime scene investigation. There's no delay. There's instant, instant response from God to what Adam and Eve have done at the bidding of the devil. In yesterday's devotion, we talked about the cursing of the serpent and how that changed life for snakes forever. Today we get more to what's really important, and that is the cursing of the devil himself who posed in the body of the serpent and let, misled the male and female, Adam and Eve. Genesis 3.15 says, I will make enemies of you and the woman and of your offspring and her descendant. He shall bruise you on the head and you will bruise him on the heel. Uh, it seems rather benign on the surface. This is called frequently the proto-gospel, the first gospel. Uh, Genesis 3.15 is called the John 3.16 of the Old Testament. It is, a, it is apparently a prophetic statement of what would come in the coming millennia and the battle that would take place and the ultimate victory of God's descendant, Eve's descendant, the Lord Jesus and the enemies of God, the descendants of Satan. It really, it literally reads, I will put enmity, I'll put conflict between you and the woman and between her seed and your seed. Sperma is the word, her seed and your seed. So the book, the translation I'm reading here says of her, of your offspring and of her descendant, because it's interpreting seed as singular being the Lord Jesus. Some people interpret this as also the battle between Christ's followers and those who choose God and those who choose to follow Satan. That may be there, but a lot of people translate the, the seed as a singular, meaning it's talking about Christ himself. So Eve, although she's fallen prey to the devil's lies, is not going to be a partner with Satan any longer. I'm going to put hatred, conflict between the woman and you. And so even though y'all partnered for a minute, that's over. And there's not going to be conflict from here on out. Beyond that, your descendants are going to fight with her descendants. And her descendants are going to conquer your descendants. The descendants of Satan ultimately could be the Antichrist. Could also be men and women who choose to side with Satan in opposition to the gospel, and there have been many. The descendants of Eve obviously include Christians and those who follow Jesus, but ultimately it means the Lord Jesus himself, as Luke traces the genealogy of Jesus all the way back to Adam and Eve. Could be both. Here's the key part. He, the descendant of Eve, will bruise you or crush you on the head. You will bruise him, the descendant of Eve, on the heel. So imagine if you've ever encountered a snake and had nothing to fight with, and you take your foot and start stomping. Maybe the serpent bites you on the heel. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe you bruise your heel so badly that you, maybe you hit him so hardly, so difficultly, so challengingly, so brutally with your heel that you bruise your heel in the process. But you crush him on the head is the point. And about the only place a serpent can get to you, if you're close enough, is the heel. And so that's an appropriate picture of this fight that's going to happen. Is that The devil will strike a blow against the Lord Jesus, but it's going to be comparatively a blow on the heel compared to the blow that the Lord Jesus is going to bring by crushing the head of Satan. So obviously this is a plan God had from eternity. He rolls it out instantly. He doesn't say, let me get back to you what this judgment's going to be. Hey, hey, devil, here's the deal. Okay, you're going to get one more lick in, but in that process, you're going to get destroyed, and you're going to be destroyed forever. And the, the promise of the descendant is that of the Lord Jesus. So in Genesis 3.15, we have the first prophecy, the first gospel of this ultimately coming and final conflict where the Lord Jesus 
and his righteous ones will defeat the enemy, the Antichrist, and his unrighteous ones. And a final blow, and the, the, the head of evil will be crushed. All of that right here in Genesis chapter 3. Isn't that fascinating? Let me encourage you to read up on this passage. There's a lot more here than I have time to get into. There's a lot of gospel, a lot of New Testament in this. There's some great stuff that I don't have time simply to delve into here. I want to introduce you to Genesis 3.15 as the John 3.16 of the Old Testament and tell you it's a promise of Christ and that we're going to win. It also is the beginning of a rescue of Eve and Adam from the clutches of the devil when he says, look, they're going to, there's going to be conflict between y'all. You're not in partnership anymore. It begins, Genesis 3.15 begins the we win. God is good. We win. Rallying cry of the Bible that would go all the way to Revelation 22. Revelation 22. That's cool. Yay, God. Lord, thank you for this time. Thanks for my good friends here listening so well. Thank you that you promised early on for redemption, and it has come through Jesus. We pray this in your name. Amen. And I will see you tomorrow.